Hello, I'm Laszlo Varga, and this is my mostly class on how to play guitar. You might remember me from my other class on how to fry an egg. Hey, I'm back. I'm back a little sooner than I expected to be. I wanted to do a follow-up video on the uh, previous Bezier masking. In the previous video, I didn't really explain a couple things, especially the curve tool or mode. And so I wanted to use this video to kind of show how the, uh, the curve tool works. So I've got this clip here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into effects. I'm going to go into the uh, Bezier masking, actually just double click it and go, okay. And it brings up the tool and let's, let's go over this real fast again. What I've discovered is basically this is the opacity on the, which we might, I'll just call it the negative mask. But the black part is, is essentially the transparent part, the opacity control for the negative mass. So you could call this uh, part here. If I move this out, you'll see it's all black. This is basically the negative mask and you, you can call this the, the positive mask. So this is the part that is the effect will be applied to. And this is the part that will show through to the layer underneath. So if you look and see, and I drag this onto the timeline, you see you can see this this clip underneath it right so this is the transparent part this is the foreground layer part you'll need this control actually when you're starting to use the curve tool so if i can if you if you want you can see how things work by just going if we go into the old tool it's basically the same thing if we click on here in mask and we go to the rectangle tool you'll see it's the same thing see this is the like the positive I'm going to call it the positive mode or the positive mask that's on the foreground. And this is what you're actually masking out. And if you come here and you switch from positive to negative, it reverses it. So that's like the invert function. This, the, the, the same original masking tool that you know and love <laughs> is the same as this thing. It's basically the same concepts, but it, it has different names and it's a little bit. So instead of uh, positive and negative, you just, you go invert. If you come over here, and switch these. It's the same. It's the same. The same function. It's po here they call it positive negative, and here it's just inverting it. If we go back into this tool, let me go to the first part of this. Go to the first frame here. So let's take a look at this. This thing is way too big, so I can just size that down right there. Okay. So now let's let's look at this. So now. If we take it down to zero, then this part is completely 100% transparent and will show through to the, the clip underneath it. And if I bring it all the way up here, there's no transparency at all and the, the top clip is going to be totally visible. You've got your choice of masks here and you've got oval, rectangle, diamond, and curve. Now, if you click on curve, what curve does, what I figured out was curve allows you to create a custom mask. So if we come over here and we click on curve, now you see this where it says edit mode right underneath that. I've got a choice of tools. I've got the normal tool, the add, delete and the split tool. I don't think the split tool is working right now, but the normal add and delete seem to be working. So if I, if I come over here and I click on add, now let me turn this blender down. So if I come over here and I click, I can start making a mask around this guy. Now, one thing, unlike the other tool, you can't go off this, the edge here. So I'm just going to make a rough mask around him like this. And it's interesting because you see all these little hash marks inside of there, but by uh, using the, the slider, the blender, you can actually, it helps you to see what you're actually masking out. Now here's where it gets kind of finicky. If you normally, when you're in the regular masking mode, if you click control, you can drag these things here. If you click, you're in, if you double click, it, uh, the Bezier handles come up and you can make some adjustments. But look, if you come over here and you click on split, which usually that's the split tangent tool, it usually just lets you turn this one half, but even if you press control, it doesn't give you the option to do the split. And I'm trying to try alt. I tried everything and it doesn't give me the ability yet. So that might just be a bug I'm hoping, or maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't seem like the split tool is quite working yet. Let's go back here and we can go to the normal edit tool. 
And if I click on these things, I can drag them around. I don't even have to hit control anymore. And I grab these handles, I can bend these, I can bend these curves. It's a little weird. You can, it's easy to get twisted around, but you can, you don't even have to hit control anymore. You can just click and drag them. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to hit control, but the, without the split tool working, it's kind of funky. So it doesn't quite work as, uh, I don't know. So like that tool, that doesn't even probably need to be there. So I can go here to go to delete and just delete. Let me just delete this one. Delete that point. And then I got to If I can go back here, I can switch my tool to, to normal and then I can drag it out. And then here again, I can make those more curved by pulling those handles, those bezier handles. You see, it got twisted around there. Do you see that? So if I just come around the other way, I can fix that. So it looks like if you double click on the point, you get those handles in the normal edit tool. Now, if I go to the add tools, let's see what happens. And I double click, let me double click. Yeah, so it lets me, it still lets me control these with the, this add tool. But if I click on a line here, it's going to add a point. So then I can just pull it in and do it like that. So it's, it's, uh, without the split tool, I guess you can work around this. It's just a little, it's a little, you got to add some more points in there. Let's see what I do there. So I added a point. So anyway, so the point, the whole point of this is that you can make a custom, a custom mask. Now, once you've uh, played around with this, you've got, so you've got all your tools here. You've got the normal edit tool. These are all the same that if you went in here to your, your regular masking, it's all the same. It's all the same tools. You've got your add, your, your normal tool, your add, your delete, your split tangent tool. Those are all the tools, the same that are, that are in the regular masking program. Those are all here, but you got to go to this drop down box to get them. And it doesn't look like the split tools working, <laughs> FYI. Okay, so I'm sure they're going to get that fixed. But now you'll notice, look at this. Because I, I went away, the the mask is gone. Look at that. I clicked away and I and I lost my mask. So it doesn't look like there's any way to save your mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm let me go back in here and let me let me recreate this mask really fast. That that's kind of a shocker. So beware of that. That if you uh, so on this one, I just in the interest of time, I'll, I'll just do a quick and dirty mask. So that's kind of a bummer that I have to redo this, but I'll, I'll just do it fast. I'm just going to click up here and I can close it. So I'll just, I'll just fix a couple of these. I'm not going to, it's really weird because just in clicking on that one point I missed and I actually added a point. So this is uh this is a little tricky uh, in here, you know, working with this tool. So I got to delete that point is what I got to do. Now, if I go just to the normal tool, I think you have better luck working with the normal tool because that way you're not actually accidentally creating an extra point. So this isn't going to be that great of a mask. So the whole point of this, like I said before, oops, is just to create a custom, a custom mask. If you find an object that you want to see how it's hard without that split tangent tool to, so I'm just going to do a rough outline here. I'm just, and if you click on these, you got these handles already on here. You can pull those handles and smooth out these angles here. Let's see if this does anything. So it's kind of a lot jammed in one spot. If you double click on it, it'll make the handles appear. That one part's bothering me. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a point right here and just bring that down. So it's a little tricky uh, playing around with this. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. So it's not, this is far from a perfect mask, but you can see that it's, see, I just added a, another point. So I didn't want to do that. So now I've got to delete it. So it is kind of a, a drag to have to go back to uh, this part every time you want to switch a tool, but it's not, it's not so bad. There we go. Okay. But the good news is you can just drag it now. You don't have to press control to drag the control points. So let me let me do this one little part here because this is really off. 
And see, without that split tangent tool, I'm kind of stuck. So you'll see it gets wound up sometimes. So actually, I don't even think I need that point. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. Let me just delete this one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it like that. So apparently, if you click, <laughs> if you click away from this, you could lose all this work. So once you've got your mask done, apparently what you want to do is you want to click off this edit mode right away. Now your mask is saved. I think it is at least. So now let's see. Now that I'm out of edit mode. What would happen if I click over here again, just for the heck of it? I'm going to go back in. Is my mask still there? Yeah. So, okay. So when you're editing your mask, once you're um, out of edit mode, it, it'll save your mask. So now we've got this mask, custom mask. What we can do is if I go in here, like I've shown before, if we go into tracking under options, we can set this to high. We can set this to size, location, although he's not really moving around that much. We can adjust the keyframe interval here. I'm sure that the, the lower that number is, the, the more accurate you're going to get. And now this is kind of cool to watch. So I noticed that you've got location here too. So we'll come down here and notice what happens when we click start. You'll see all the uh, relevant points moving, like it's just moving here and it's, it's doing all these, adding all these motion tracking points. And that's, uh, and so I don't really see the mask moving too much, actually. Maybe because it's not really, he's not really moving. But then it laid down all those uh, tracking points for us. So that's a, that's a custom mask. And then what we could do is, let's say you wanted to add an effect. So we're going to add an effect. Let's do something, uh, let's do something I don't usually do. Let's do the TV simulator. Okay, now you can see if we go in here to Bezier masking, because I have this blend on and this controls the opacity of the negative mask, which is, I pull all that down, it just is, the effect is just on him. But because I don't have anything beneath it, you can't really see. So if I drag this over and put this here, wait, let me get rid of this. So I have that other mask, I have the mask actually on this one. So let me check this off. Okay, so now you can see uh, there's our, there, where is that moving? Uh, hold on. Uh, let's see, I must have uh, something going on here. Uh, oh my gosh, look at all these points. Okay, so let me just get rid of this one. And I'll just drag that to the center. Let's take care of that. Okay, so let me. So now the effect is just around him. But it's not really moving that much, I guess, because he's not really moving. But if you say you don't like that hard line around him, you could go and uh, you could feather this out. I mean, I don't know how far you want to get with the feather, but maybe that far. And this is kind of what you you end up with. So just in summary, with this curve, the mask type on curve, it allows you to create a custom mask. Once you enable it, it gives you access to the same controls you have in the normal. You got normal, add, delete, split. Doesn't seem like it's working as of uh, August 31st and I can't get it to work. I've tried pressing other keys. I don't know if there's some magic combination. But once you're done making the mask, you got to get out of edit mode. Otherwise, you, you'll lose your mask. So that's a big insight. So this edit mode thing is kind of a big deal. You can only make one mask. You can make a custom mask. And then once you're done editing the mask, be sure to click off of that. And then it saves your mask. And then once you save the mask, you can actually move the mask around. So see how it's moving around? I can actually still go back and adjust this a little bit more if I wanted to. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, I could probably tighten it up a little bit if I wanted to yeah, like that. I don't know that may not work that great because there's some parts lost here, but you could actually expand or contract the mask if you wanted. So that would be one way to expand or contract uh, the mask. And that's, that's pretty much it. So you can create your own custom masks using this, uh, which let's, uh, play it back. And this is, <laughs> 
this is what we get. So this is just kind of a quick and dirty live intro into the Bezier masking tool using the curve type tool. So I hope you found this helpful. So take care and have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time.